say when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. This film, as you will have been able to see from the thumbnail, the title and well, if you've read any of it, the description. I really liked the look of the colourful side of the palette that Raw Beauty Christie did with Pure. But I couldn't afford it. And I would only have used the colourful side, not the neutral side. But I still felt like I was missing out seeing all the tutorials of people that did manage to get hold of one. So... I took a wander through my single shadow collection. And I duped it. As best I can. The results... in here. So, if you want to find out how well I've done at duping it, which shades I used, what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor, then my friends you're in precisely the right place. As I've said for some time, oft here echoed elsewhere in less imaginative channels but they're not backed up by Sammy the Sloth Straw grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I'm trying to get back into this habit of filming. Um, I had sort of two weeks where there were no uploads, but that's been about three and a half weeks of not filming um, because of pain and the two week heat wave we had, which thank the Lord has finally finished. Um, but I would have shown you the outside of this. Um, I'll put a picture up here of the Raw Beauty Christie X Pure palette, the colourful side, not the neutral side, obviously, which looks like that, and I done duped it, because I at the time it was released I couldn't afford it B I thought I'm not paying that much when I'm only going to be using half of the palette and C do you know how long people were having to wait in a queue to get that damn palette? <laughs> yeah no so I duped it starting from the red and going across if you are interested to know what I have used, the red is a. I think it's a ColourPop. Yeah, it's ColourPop O Ship. The teal is Makeup Obsession Nymph. The purple is a ColourPop Try Me. Next row down, the orange is Makeup Obsession Hitchhiker. The one shimmer in the palette, which is, uh, it looks white, but I don't know if I can actually get it to, maybe if I flip the mirror over you might be able to see the pink shift better. Does that show the pink shift up? I hope so. Uh, 
when you swatch it, which I'll put the swatches up probably over this side actually while I'm talking, um, it does actually have a pink shift to it, so it does actually match. It was the closest match I had in my collection to the um, shimmer in that palette. That's actually from an indie brand which no longer exists, so sorry you can't get that one. But then the whole point of this is duping it with stuff you've got in your own collection. Uh, the hot pink is Makeup Obsession Lily. The mustard yellow in the bottom corner is Makeup Obsession Bumblebee. The little tiny blue in the middle is Colourpop Brunch Club. Now this was, I picked this up from Depop ages ago because I've been looking at the Zoella Brunch Club palette or brunch date palette or whatever it was which was neutral with just that pop of blue and I thought I only really like the blue and then somebody on Depop was saying I never use the blue so I've taken it out but anybody like to buy it and I'm like mm, hello me please uh, so that's from the brunch date palette but it's called brunch club I don't know if you can buy it individually but again this is you duping it from stuff you've got in your palettes and your single collection and the white in the bottom corner is Makeup Obsession Snow White right hopefully the swatches will have been up I'm having to kind of keep an eye on my phone because it's Monday 31st which is the day the Nikki Tutorials palette is being released and I've I signed up for the um, the early release notification thing on Beauty Base. I'm waiting for the email to come through, so I keep I've been paranoid checking my phone all bloody day. Oh, sorry. Don't know what I'm apologising for. I often snort. Right, I'm going to grab some brushes. What sort of brushes do I want to? Actually, I might use those ones over there. Rather than make more clean ones dirty. Don't get me wrong, these are clean. I have just... Um, I've just kind of wiped them off on a clean washcloth rather than a colour switch, basically. Right, so I'm going to use a couple of medium fluffy blenders probably a small fluffy blender and probably flat pack a brush of some variety so this is a teaching channel I always put disclaimers at the start of all of my films and it seems like no matter what I do I'm getting moaned at. I have started to put text up on screen explaining that I go at a speed that my chronic pain lets me go at but that allows other people with chronic pain and complete beginners to be able to keep up with me which I feel is important because there are not enough tutorial channels out there aimed at beginners through to you know more advanced so I wanted to try and fill that gap in the market if I'm going too slowly for you there is a speed widget. Please use it. I also mention the fact that I zoom in tight right close to just my eyes on screen. So yes this does mean that there are times when I look down to find a brush or put more pigment on a brush or look for something else and you see my hairline. The reason I zoom in that far is because I have viewers who are pretty much myopic 
without their glasses on. They follow my tutorials on the phone screen. If I wasn't zoomed in that close, they wouldn't be able to see what the hell I'm doing. Also, what you don't see when I'm zoomed in that close are the grimaces of pain that I try and hide from all of you. So I started putting it up as text for a number of reasons. One, you should see some of the comments that YouTube held back for me to review of people commenting on the fact that I zoom in that close. The reason I put it up as text, psychologically you are more likely to read text than you are to listen to someone who is talking to you. Also, if you are a regular viewer and you know that once I've talked you through what I'm going to do, I then talk you through the fact that this is a teaching channel and the fact that I'm going to show you a clip in a minute where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes, you could be speeding through just to the tutorial bit. In which case you wouldn't be able to hear me if you're, if, not if you're playing it at double speed, but if you're using the, the bar at the bottom to scrub along through the film, you wouldn't hear me say why I zoom in that close. So I figured if I put it up as text, the people that are scrubbing through quickly or are playing it at double speed and maybe miss what I'm saying will see that there's text and we'll go back to read it. I'm really getting tired of having to explain everything I do on my channel. That being said, I've lost three more of you this week, so you clearly don't like being spoken to like children. I'll stop bloody behaving like children. I'll stop talking to you like it. Okay? Cool. Sorry, folks. I'm just in... I'm in so much pain. And my tether... Well, the end of it's about six foot that way. Right. I'm going to insert that clip now before I start getting more bitchy where I talk you through uh, the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. The way that eyeshadow wears on them is very similar through the day which is why so many people get them mixed up but the way you actually physically apply them to get the best look out of them and to get them to last as long as possible through the day is slightly different. The clip will be zoomed in to just my eyes. Please don't scream if that's a shock to you that you're suddenly that close. And I will be back at the other end of it to play with this dupe palette. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. 
and I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back and I promise you I'm in a slightly better mood than I was seconds ago. Okay, I'm going to refer to these by the physical colour that I'm using rather than the name of it because if you've got the Raw Beauty Christie one it's not going to be the same names as in her palette and if you've duped it from your own collection then you're going to be having different names as well. What you're hearing now is Hubby coming in the back door and doing his best Scooby-Doo sneak impersonation Ooh. where the knees come up round the jawline but you're so zoomed in you can't actually see that oh. which is why I'm describing it to you. <laughs> I don't know what they... it's nothing like it I swear. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I'm going to start off by going in to... Ooh, I think I'm going to go into the pink first, the hot pink. I like the fact that when um, Christy put this palette together, she did a load of colourful mattes. <laughs> you just looked at my hairline again, didn't you? Yeah. So I just got a flash that I've got a text in or a message in. Just need to check to see if it's Beauty Bay and no, it's not. 
Okay. One of the things that I loved about this particular palette that Christy created is that she's put a lot of colourful mattes in. Right. Always hold your brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. And instead of the windscreen wiper method of blending, which you will see 20 year olds doing on YouTube, we're going to go for the Viennese Waltz. This is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get to where we're going, and then reverse turns to come back out again. The reason we do this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers that have always been slim that have looser eyelids. It can just be genetic. By doing this circular blending movement instead of the back forth windscreen wiper, it helps eliminate the vertical white striping you can get where your lid folds over on itself. Now I do get very dry patches just here and here on both eyes which can affect how shadows perform but we're not really judging these shadows we're judging more the colour story because obviously this isn't Christie's palette <laughs> yeah I love the fact that she put um, on the colourful side just the one shimmer because one of the things that you'll see a lot with brighter colours They can be a lot more difficult to create, particularly the deeper, brighter colours like the purple, like the teal, like the red. Um, so you'll see a lot of companies almost kind of cop out and pop shimmer in. They'll make it either a full on shimmer or they'll make it a satin. Where it's matte, by, where it's you know, half matte, half shimmer pigment. And they do this because shimmers are easier to create than mattes are. And most people won't try and blend a shimmer. I will, but most people won't. Which means that if they have got a bad formula, you can't really tell because you're just. You're really just packing it on in most cases with a shimmer, for most people. Uh, the reason I keep stopping and, you know, checking both eyes is because unless you're James Charles, your eyes are not symmetrical. The only reason his are symmetrical is he photoshops them that way afterwards. So you can see I've done the same shape on both eyes, but when I relax them, it looks like I've got a slightly different shape from one side to the other. So it gives me the opportunity to adjust the shaping so that they match before I pop more colours on, which if you put your next lot of colour on straight away, you wouldn't necessarily have the chance of spotting. And yes, you could say, well, after X number of years, you should know you how your eyes are shaping. Well, yeah, but part of the problem with fibro is that my eyelids can swell up and down. And so can anybody's with hay fever, conjunctivitis, an eyelash irritating you overnight. Um, you can probably hear hubby with the lawnmower. I do apologise for that. But my pain pills have kicked in, so I'm taking the opportunity to film. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of um, companies will make their brighter colours and their deeper colours shimmers or satins because it's a bit of a cop out, really. So I really, really like the fact that she chose to have bright and colourful mattes all the way round, just with the one shimmer in the middle. I know a lot of people won't like that and they'll want more shimmers you can't tell me you haven't got palettes with shimmers in you know but I'm going to go into the orange next because it's a colourful palette 
and I want to. Now if you're going to blend two colours together and you don't want a harsh line between them, if you start off with your brush half on the colour you're blending and half on the lid that hasn't got anything on it yet, you will find you get a much easier blend. The reason I start at the outside edge and work in is because if you do suddenly dollop a little bit too much um, pigment down, it's much easier to blend it out over here when your nose isn't in the way. So I'm just going to add this orange in here, oh, blend it nicely with that hot pink, feeling a bit like a tutti frutti sweet. I don't know if you have those in America, they're, uh, they're packaged with hot pink and bright orange wrapper and they're kind of, sort of strawberry flavoured at one side and orange flavoured at the other and they're a chewy, almost nuggety or nougat type sweet or candy as I suppose you'd call it just going to dip back into the pink just for the blend of the two there just to see and then you get almost a seamless blend it's difficult to tell where one colour finishes and the next one starts and that's exactly what we wanted um, I'm just cleaning the brush off on the clean washcloth in between uh, I used to use colour switches but they are way way too harsh on your bristles, especially if you're using um, natural brushes. I mean, I'm not, these are synthetic. But if you're using a natural hair brush, please don't use colour switches, they will wreck it. I don't mean wrecking the mic like Anton Deck did. Sorry, PJ and Duncan as they were then. Just wrecked the mic. So Okay. When I've been in a lot of pain, my mind bounces around from subject to subject and back again. Do apologise if you're trying to keep up with me. I want to try and get my brain back on track. How's your taping? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, well... And then my lovelies, I hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day watching me over breakfast or while you're doing your makeup, well, I was hoping your day is fab. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so I was I was really surprised um, when she showed the format of this being just the one shimmer in the middle, of, but pleasantly surprised. I was really happy to see that um, because it can be difficult sometimes to get colourful mattes that are actually any good. And knowing what Christie's like when it comes to using colour and having things work and loving things with her whole heart, um, and the number of times she tells her camera to do your job. <laughs> um, you know, I, I knew that she would make sure the quality was good, you know. Obviously, I haven't got the pure one to try, these are a mixture of. Colourpop, Makeup Geek, and not Makeup Geek, Colourpop, Makeup Obsession, and an indie company that's not around now. So, right, I'm going into the yellow, and I'm going to use this to just soften that top edge a little bit. Again, starting off on the pink, 
And when I get across there, I'll be on the orange. I just want to buff the edges out. If this is going to be too, too bright for you, you could always go in with the white shade. Or um, whatever your setting powder is, you could use. You know, whatever your face powder is, you can always use that to, to soften an edge. But, you know me, if there's, if there's an option for colour, I'm going to take it. Because life is too damn short. It's not a dress rehearsal, we only get one go at it. So... Puppy's been doing quite a lot of work in the garden, actually. We've... Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I've shown you before his tiki shack, which was pink, orange and yellow. No. Pink, but orangey pink started off orange faded to pink, yellow and lime green. Well, when he bought the paints to redo it, he bought yellow and he bought lime green and then he bought like a purpley grey colour, which has completely made it lose its beautiful brightness that it had. Um, but now he's built a bit in front of it on the, on the floor where <laughs> he's built a framework and he's filled it with um, beach pebbles because where he works at Wix he can use his staff discount to pick them up a bit cheaper so he's now got like a gravel beach in front of the, the tiki shack as he calls it we've got an owl on it at the moment on a piece of wood and uh, I asked him what he wanted for his birthday and he, there's this specific garden statue, this Welsh Buddha that he wants so that's on its way and that's going to apparently go on the beach as well <laughs> I don't know folks I genuinely don't know but I love him to bits and if it makes him happy as long as he Keeps the garden looking neat and tidy. I don't mind. As so long as any bee attracting plants are down the bottom of the garden because allergies and stuff. I finally got my patio, which is lovely. Right, going down to this smaller blending brush now. And I'm going to go into the purple. Who knew I was going to go into the purple? this through what is effectively my crease so if you've had to move your crease line this is where you now follow the new line that you've made okay and again just tiny little circles because I don't want to take away from the orange that we've got going on there I'm just going to build this purple up on the outer corner here. Bring it onto the outer third of the mobile lid. Now, if you get a patchy bit like what I'm getting here, I will continue blending to see if I can blend it away. If I can't blend it away because it's one of the dry patches that I get on my eyes. I will show you a wee bit of a little trick that works quite well at covering them up. Although having said that, no I've blended it. In real life, that's blended, but in my camera, it's not. Right, once you've got your edges all blended out how you want, dip back into the colour and just pat it 
into place and just do that and then buff the very edges of it and then you can build the pigment up in the area that you are experiencing an issue with. As I was saying, in real life that's perfectly blended, so you know, these things happen. And it is something that I have actually noticed that um, I've heard other creators say the same thing. They're like, mm, it's blended in my mirror, but it's not blended on my camera. What's going on? Um, so, yeah. Just going to do the same over this side. Um, to give you all an update after my get ready with me where I hop the photos up of my my legs with the cellulitis on I've had a lot of really lovely messages after that thank you everyone it's taken the time to either comment on the film or drop me a private message it does mean an awful lot, particularly when you're having a particularly bad pain day and then you open your app up and you've got some lovely messages waiting for you. That, that really has helped a, a lot more than, than I think any of you realise, so I, I really appreciate that, thank you. Um, Thank you just seems like such an inadequate way of truly expressing how much I appreciate it. Um, so I do really hope that my appreciation is coming through. Um, GP's now prescribed me antibiotics. For my legs. Um, I'd only had one week's worth of it right back at the start when this started months and months ago. Of course this whole Covid nonsense cropped up which hasn't helped because the way my doctor's is laid out, the disabled parking was round the back which is normally fine because they've got uh, automatic doors right next to the disabled parking but because of Covid they've only got the one door open which is locked all the time and you have to ring the bell and tell the receptionist what you're there for. While I'm chatting I'm just going to use a pad with some micellar water on just to tidy the edges up a little bit. I much prefer doing this to using tape because if the tape is strong enough and sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath it and it's going to pull at your skin when you take it off. It kind of defeats the object of not pulling your face around, doesn't it? Um, yeah, the, the only door they have open now is a narrow door which you have to step over into. And literally, if this square was the, if this was the building, the disabled parking is here and you have to walk to the edge of the building all the way down the side of the pharmacy which is attached to it all the way across the front of the pharmacy all the way across the front of the doctor's surgery right to the far end of the building down this narrow little pathway into this single narrow doorway with the step over so you know, it's not even like we could take my wheelchair and hubby could push me around and get me in there because you wouldn't even get a standard wheelchair through, let alone a bariatric one, which is one I use. Um, 
So it makes it very difficult for me to get into the surgery because physically the the distance that I have to walk to get round the building to get in just even with Chris there I just can't do it, you know. Right, I'm gonna go in with this flat brush and I'm gonna go into the shimmer. Once I've packed the pigment on, I shall wet it. I'm using this one at the moment. You can use any spray, you can use a moisturiser like Mary Badescu or MAC Fix Plus. You can use a finishing spray, a setting spray, priming spray, you can even just use plain water. Just don't go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Even if this means you have to go in two or three times to build the pigment up, that is far preferable to knackering your pigment. You can see this is quite a flaky pigment, so I'm just going to wet brush. Always dry your ferrule off as well. The easiest way to do that is stick it in your knuckles and spin because you don't want moisture coming down here loosening the bristles because then you wouldn't have a brush, you'd have a stick yeah so it's made it difficult for me to get into the doctors um, I've been sending emails with photos of my legs and stuff to try and see if we can get things sorted but um, We started off with iodine patches and they didn't help. So then we moved on to zinc oxide bandages. And they helped a little bit. I'm just going to draw the brush off and go and pick some more pigment up. But they still didn't, didn't really do enough. Uh, so I picked up some um, a company called Active Silver. I mean, I don't know what I'm mentioning them, they haven't got a clue who I am, apart from the fact that I've made a couple of orders from them. Um, a company called Active Silver in the UK. And uh, they do a silver spray, which is basically aloe vera gel and colloidal silver in a bottle with a pump nozzle on the top. Um, and I started to use that instead of the zinc oxide and that was actually making a bit of progress so messaged in again saying look if you've got silver dressings we can try this time um, and I really do think I need antibiotics because this has gone on for months it's not clearing up I'm lucky if I can get two hours sleep a night and that's not two hours continuous, that's ten minutes here, five minutes there, fifteen minutes here, twenty minutes there. Uh, with this particular eye, because of the deep creasing that I've got, um, I do actually have to stretch this lid out, which I always tell you not to do, but if I don't, this pigment just packs really tightly in these creases here. Um, and then flakes down through the dough rather than being properly blended. But you can see I literally only pull it, the lid out as far as it takes to straighten the creases and to blend that on. And as soon as that's blended, I'm going to gently let go and do the rest of the lid the same way that I did this one over here. Um, yeah, and I said, you know, it's getting ridiculous now, I'm not sleeping, it's affecting everything, my depression's getting worse, you know, but I didn't say I can't even film my films and stuff, but, you know, that's, that's, <sighs> sorry, this is super flaky, this pigment, um, you know, that's, that's the stage that I was at. I couldn't even physically sit down and film because if you've never had cellulitis it's it's a nerve pain 
um, probably the easiest way to describe it to you if you've never had it. You know if you have a really bad toothache, how that pain just resonates and reverberates, not just in the tooth itself, but along the whole jaw and up through your skull and you know in some cases just walking as you put your foot on the floor the the kind of impact of walking jolts your jaw and that kind of intense pain that's what cellulitis is like but bearing in mind that my cellulitis is in an area where I already have an issue with hypersensitivity on my skin because of my fibro. So the skin on my calves particularly is like a combination of Say you've got gravel rash, and then you get sunburn over the top of that. And then every time someone touches you, they're actually touching you with a cheese grater. That's how sensitive the skin on my legs is. On a good day. Just with fibro. So you then add in the... Um, the nerve pain of cellulitis and uh, yeah uh, if I was also I've been taken to the glue factory right now right I will pause you here in the middle of my feeling sorry for myself ramblings uh, I'll chuck some foundation and base products on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off of you uh, for me it's going to be a little while but for you, it's going to be instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Um, I did my usual soap brows and used the blue from the bottom here to do the setting of the soap brow and adding the colour. I've also added, it's actually one of those um, XX Revolution Magnetics Duochrome Eyeliners. This one's in shade Energy. Can you see that? Hopefully, I've got that out right so you can read it. Um, and it's kind of a an oil slick green with a, a purple shift to it. So I just thought that would tie in nicely with the colours on my lid but would be subtle enough that you just get a subtle flash of it depending on what angle my eyes were at. Right, using flat topped brush I'm going to go into the teal. like so. Now I do struggle very often with putting things in my waterline. I've had some limited success with the uh, the BH Power Pencil and the Barry M High Viz one that I tried. So you may find that I put something in my waterline and again, I may not. I've always had extremely watery eyes. Add to that, fibro makes my eyes water. Add to that, hay fever and hubby's been cutting the grass. Doesn't take a rocket scientist. I kind of feel like an exotic peacock and I really like it. Um, right. 
love this brush this is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette flat topped and chunky a little bit like me and I'm actually going to go into the snow white or the white in here and use that to soften the teal rather than a secondary colour just to keep it as bright as I can under there but just to soften it and smudge it out a little bit make it a bit more grungy and a little less harsh lines you know all the colours from this palette. No, I haven't used the red. Okay. Oh, nearly used them all. Right. I'm going to go into my Rach Loves Pixie highlight thing. And I'm going to go into this one first. This is Zipper. And I'm picking it up on effectively an old uh, lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago now. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that up under the tail of my brow to brighten it a bit and give us a hint of lilac to pull in here. And then I'm going to go into shade Lace. For the inner corner, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oof. Right, my lovely ones, I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some mascara on, I'm going to pop some highlight on my cheeks I'll see if I can get something to stay in my waterline, put some lippy on, do something with the hair and I'll be back with my finished look and my overall thoughts on the colour choices for the palette for you, again, after this wibbly bit instant I am back, okay I risked putting some BH Power Pencil in teal in my waterline. Let's see how long it stays there. The mascara today is my Catrice Glamour. Hubby washing his hands at the kitchen sink. The mascara is the Catrice Glamour Doll Volume Waterproof Mascara absolute dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Band but it's cheaper and it's waterproof uh, what else lipstick is NYX liquid suede in shade Life's a Beach uh, setting spray is Gerard Slayer Day in Mint Choc Chip which is part of the Rich Lux collection uh, yes I do have a discount code for Gerard Yes, it is affiliated. I make a small discount. All of my discount discount. I make a small commission. All my discount codes are listed in the description box. So, what do I think of Christie's shadow selection? I love it. I really, really love it. I feel like a a multi-coloured parrot. I probably should have gone for a more neutral lip but this is me. Do I ever do what's normal? No. Normal is just sitting on the washing machine for me as far as I'm concerned. Um, I really like the colour selection that she's chosen. Now I've not used pure shadows so 
obviously I can't comment as to the quality of those but what I will say is if you are tempted yourself to pull shadows from your singles collection or I have a lipstick on my teeth Great. Fabulous. If you are tempted to pull colours from your singles collection or get a load of palettes there and swatch them and see if you can dupe the palette out because you want to try creating a look from that colour scheme I'd say go for it because I really really like this look the only thing I would say is maybe the blue that I've got is slightly too dark maybe it could have done being a little brighter but I didn't it was either this or a more pastel blue I didn't have anything that exactly matched um, and maybe the, I don't know whether it's because it's right next to the purple but the pinky um, shifty shimmery colour uh, looks more lilac at the moment but as I said that could just be because it's the white pigment is picking up on the purple it is laid next to uh, all told I really like that colour scheme and a lot of cases I'll pull a colour scheme together use it three or four times and then it either becomes something else or it will go back into my normal collection I get the feeling this one might actually be staying as it is for a little while because I really enjoyed this right okay I hope you've enjoyed this if you did it would be awesome if you could hit that like button for me and leave a bit of a comment it really does help on the algorithm and getting the films pushed out uh, elsewhere um, I normally at this point say if you're a regular viewer please double check you are still subscribed and double check your bell notification is still on however I now understand that even if the bell notification is on and you have chosen all you're not guaranteed to get emails. I queried this with YouTube on Twitter and got told yes well we decided we were bunging people's emails up too much. Yes but if we've selected which channels we want notifications on and we've told you we want all of their notifications clearly we don't mind you sending us emails regarding them putting new films up. Um, this changed couple of weeks ago with absolutely no notice not to viewers and not even to creators like myself so um, I would say check your notifications are on and you've got all notifications chosen because when they last did an update they knocked it all back to personalised um, but whether you actually get emails who knows they could change their mind again in a fortnight's time without telling us and put it back the way it was if you are new here and you've managed to discover me somehow even though youtube are seemingly determined to stop small creators from growing hi hello welcome i hope you enjoyed it here uh, if you've made it this far and you're hearing this i'm guessing you must have liked something even if it was just me blethering on about all kinds of nonsense in what I'm told is a very soothing voice it'd be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family it's super easy to do you hit the red subscribe button turn it grey and then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope and prayer that YouTube will change their mind again and start sending emails out again. In the meantime, while we wait for that, 
I've got an awful lot of other playlists you can have a look through. I've got other films where I dupe a palette. I've got just straightforward tutorials. I've got product reviews, challenges, tags, collabs, my Zodiac series. I even read you my favourite poem. So you're going to find something to interest you. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time, basically, as I've said, for some time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I, I will see you next time. Bye for now.